hello there and welcome to another interesting and entertaining IELTS speaking video. My name is Keith and I'm here to help you improve your English, give better answers and get a higher score on the IELTS speaking test. What do you think of that slogan? Yeah? Oh, uh, yeah? Okay, great. So listen, today we're going to be looking at IELTS speaking part three, events and live performances. Let's do it. Hello, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Keith and I run a website called IELTS Speaking Success, which is to help you with your IELTS speaking preparation. In addition to the website and the YouTube channel, I also have an online course on Udemy if you want to study with me. In addition to that, if you want live one-on-one -on -one classes, I teach on italki. You can find out more in the links below. And also, gosh, there's more, on Facebook, I do Facebook Live every Tuesday, every Thursday, 10 o'clock Spain time. Come and join me there as well. But for today, let's get into IELTS speaking part three. So I'm going to take one of the questions today from part two, one of the topics, and then look at the part three questions that uh, we know about and that the examiner might ask you. I'll look at the kind of question and the kind of answers you can give. And the focus today is on this question from part two. Describe a performance you watched recently. So the part three questions here are going to be looking at live performances. Let's have a look first at the questions you may get. <clears throat> what kinds of live performances do people in your country enjoy? What kinds of something? This is a common question and it means you want to be talking about one or two different kinds. Don't list 10 or 20 kinds. Just take one or two and go into more detail and depth about them. Next question. Do live performances have to be outside or can they be inside? Another typical question. Um, the either or. And here, to be honest, you can talk about just one of them or you can talk about both of them if you like. It's entirely up to you, whichever you believe and whichever you think will give you the best language. Number three, do you think entertainers have a difficult life? That's a good question, isn't it? <laughs> the clue clearly, do you think, is to give your opinion. So you want to be giving your opinion, giving the reason why, and then give lots of, not lots of, give one or two examples to show more clearly um, your opinion. Okay, next. How has technology affected the entertainment industry? So here you're going to need to analyse and evaluate. So talking about the industry and analysing how technology may have affected it, the consequences of that, and whether maybe it's a good or a bad thing. So there's a lot we can talk about here. I'll be showing you how to very shortly. Be patient. Finally, to what extent? Da, 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 da. To what extent? Again, it's asking you to analyse, to give your opinion, justify, say why, and give examples to give force and strength to your answer. And of course, the big thing about examples is it gives you much richer language. So your vocabulary score goes up. Exactly. Now, to what extent does the entertainment industry impact a country's economy? Now these, some questions are straightforward, some are certainly more challenging. And this is the whole point about part three. Whilst the exam is about language, you need enough ideas to be able to talk about. So today I will give you a plethora of ideas to talk about. As I begin, I just want to say a big thank you to all of the students who have been in this class on Facebook. We discussed this earlier today and lots of ideas came from the different students on Facebook. Brilliant ideas. We brought them all together and I want to share them with all of you today. So a big thank you to the Facebook students. And if you're not there, why not? 
Get onto Facebook every Tuesday, Thursday, 10 o'clock. It's free. It's fun. Come and join us. Moving on. What kinds of live performances do people in your country enjoy? So here, what kinds of, as I, as I mentioned, is you want to be giving one or two examples. It's in your country, which is great. So you can talk specifically about your country and the different things you have. I guess many of them in this day and age of globalization will be quite similar. So the things that pop into my mind are music, concerts, right? Concerts, music concerts. Um, these are typical live performances, whether it's in a indoors, like in a concert hall or a big stadium. There is near where um, I used to live, at least in Manchester. I'm from Manchester. We have the GMX Stadium. It's a huge stadium um, that has been, it's an exhibition centre that is used for concerts as well. It was unfortunately famous a few years ago because a bomb exploded um, during the concert. I think it was Ariadna Grande. Um, but it's a great concert hall and that is the kind of live performance you can talk about, concerts. Or maybe you're into dance. So you can talk about ballet, contemporary dance, different forms of dance. These are live performances. Even when I was in China, we had these local community dances where the people in the park, often the retired people, would come together and dance. Sometimes for themselves, but sometimes it was a performance for other people to watch. Hmm. If you're into comedy, you can talk about stand-up comics right? These are the comedians who go on the stage, they stand up in front of an audience and they tell jokes. Stand-up comedy is another kind of performance. Um, talking about music, um, in England we have some festivals, music festivals, and this is a bit different from a concert because it's not just one concert, it's a series over two or three days where people congregate in a field full of mud, in a farmer's field, and they put up a stage and all of these famous singers and groups from around the world will come and you sit there in the pouring rain, really happy. No, it's great fun. Um, and all the people come together to watch the concerts. Um, the big ones, I think, are Glastonbury and Reading also, big festivals. So you could talk about that. Maybe you have something similar in your country. In addition, you may want to talk about sport because a lot of sport is performance, right? Football. We talk about the football matches is a live performance. If you go and watch Real Madrid against Atletico Madrid and you're in the Bernabeu and it's this massive stadium with 80,000 people, it's a live performance going on. Also, boxing is another one you could talk about or most competitive sports, I think. Right. So there are some different kinds of performances you could talk about. Let's look at the next question. Do live performances have to be outside or can they be inside? What a strange question. And an interesting one, right? I mean, let me think off the top of my head. It depends on the performance. Um, most most performances could be either or. Weather permitting, you can perform outside whatever you're doing. You could do ballet, theatre, sport outside, so long as the weather is good enough. Um, but on the other hand, there are some performances, and I'm thinking especially music, where it's better indoors because you get better acoustics. So many indoor theatres have special wooden um ceilings and walls, can't remember the name, walls, yes, basic elementary English, Keith. They have wooden ceilings and walls and they have great acoustics. So the reverberation, the sound is much better indoors, um, especially for classical music, I would say. So it does depend on the, the performance. Of course, if you're outdoors, there can be problems with the weather. And the biggest problem, I think, when you're outdoors is imagine those rock concerts, right? When there's 10,000 people and you're at the very, very back and you can see the little, little, little man 
or the group on the stage like matchstick toys and you can't see them. Even though they have a screen, it's not quite the same. Again, football matches. You're at the top of the stadium. You can't even see the football. It's like a little fly. You can't see very well. So although the atmosphere can be very lively and jovial, then mm, you can't really see. So maybe some events and performances lend themselves better to being indoors. That's nice, isn't it? Lend themselves to being indoors. It means they're more suited to being indoors. So rock concerts lend themselves to being outdoors. Classical music lends itself to being indoors. Hey, good language, hey? Right, indoors or outdoors? Next question. Do you think entertainers have a difficult life? Well, <laughs> many for most people, the instant reaction is, of course not. They're loaded. They're rolling in money. They have more money than I have had hot dinners. I mean, seriously, is it a difficult life? Of course not. That's your first reaction, OK? <clears throat> and that can be true. However, when we think about it, there are two kinds of entertainers, aren't there? There's the famous celebrity who is rolling in money. I love that. Rolling, literally rolling in money. You have lots of money. Those famous celebrities are far, few and far between. Not many of them. Few and far between. But then we've got all of the other entertainers who are not famous. But it's their job. It's their craft. They're working every day in, in the local pub or local concert halls. Entertaining. Now, they're life is difficult. <laughs> Couldn't find the word. Their life is a struggle for many of them. Because, why? Because there's n they don't have the same financial security that you have from a job. Because some months you make money, some months there's no income. Depending if you get a role or a job or a gig or a tour or a concert, and so it can be very hard. That financial instability is really taxing or tiring. It's difficult, right? That's one thing. And sometimes for these people, it's a real struggle because their parents or family may be against the idea of them being an entertainer. It's not the traditional job, right, of being a doctor or working in a library, being an entertainer, the associations with rock and roll and drugs and a a decadent lifestyle or a bad lifestyle are quite strong. So many parents may be against them and not supportive of them. It's a nice word, supportive. So remember, I always talk about word groups, families, word families. When you learn the verb, learn the adjective and the noun, right? To support, to be supportive. A support, the family can be a good support sometimes. So it can be tough, right, um, for these people who are not famous. They're often waiting in the wings, which is an interesting expression because it actually comes from theatre. When you go to see a play at the theatre, you've got your stage, right, and then you've got the little actors on the stage and you've got your curtains and Behind the curtains is called the wings of the stage. And the actors who are waiting to come on, they're waiting for their opportunity, they're waiting in the wings. And so we take this expression when you're waiting for your opportunity or for your lucky break. You're waiting in the wings. So many, many entertainers are actually waiting in the wings for a big opportunity and uh, they, they can struggle. Let's talk also about the famous celebrities, because although they've got lots of money, usually, is life easy for them? In many ways, it's not, because their privacy is invaded. They're followed, um, you know, harassed sometimes by the paparazzi. Um, I was thinking before of Prince Harry and Meghan, you know, they're, are they, are they entertainers? No. Are they, well, they do entertain us, don't they? But they're not entertainers as such. They're more um, the celebrities. 
But they are harassed by the paparazzi and so much so they've decided to leave the royal family. So for many entertainers and pop stars and singers and maybe professional athletes, that fame is a bad thing because you have no privacy um, and you can get scathing reviews from the media. I mean, really harsh, critical reviews, which many people could get upset about. So they have to have hard, they have to be thick skinned. That's the one, be thick skinned. They have to be thick skinned so they're not sensitive to these comments that they get because everybody and anybody is going to be uh, saying bad things or negative things about them. So it can be tough for these you know, famous entertainers as well. <clears throat> there we go. Let's move on. How has technology affected the entertainment industry? So I think there are many things we can talk about here. Um, let's take the internet as the key technology factor. There are two things to look at. One is the, the technology and the other one is the entertainment industry. Technology, we could talk about the internet. We could start talking about streaming. Um, we could start talking about social media, all of those. With the entertainment industry, we could start talking about music. Um, we could talk about uh, about what film as well and sport. So there are different ways. I think is sport an entertainment industry? I guess it is actually, although it's often a separate category. Um, so maybe you want to focus more on kind of music and film and that kind of entertainment. So how has it changed? Well, let's take the internet first. How has that changed the entertainment industry generally? Well, I think nowadays it's easy for anybody to get into the limelight or into the spotlight. In the past, it used to be quite difficult. It was a hard road to become famous. Um, it was very difficult. But now, because we've got the internet, um, there's a culture of creation. Everybody is creating, not everybody, of course, not everybody, but lots more people are creating their videos, their books, their songs, their music, and they're putting it online, often through social media kind of channels, some specifically for music or for film. And so they can get a wider audience and become more well known. Um, and so I think the internet is changing how quickly people can reach their audience and entertain them. So that's for one. And another thing is, it's really a lot easier now to get the kind of high tech tools that we need to create music, song, dance, film, right? So the, the price of equipment has come down. You can buy a cheap DSL camera. Uh, you can get a fairly good quality microphone for a reasonable price, much cheaper than before. And you can be up and running and making a film or a song and putting it on the internet for a cheap price and quite quickly and effectively. And so it's made the whole creation and entertainment industry much more accessible for the artists and much easier for them to reach their audience because they're creating um, what well, because they're creating different stuff because they're creating more stuff the downside of course is that the quality for example of recordings has gone down so your typical mp3 and audio recording is much lower than the old-fashioned cds that we used to have because they're trying to compress the sound and put a lot more songs on your ipod if they still exist um, and so the quality has gone down a little bit in order to have more and a higher quantity certainly equipment is cheaper when it comes to film and music, I think it's good to talk about streaming because technology now has changed the whole game in the entertainment industry. Whereas before, your musicians and filmmakers used to sell um, the old vinyl albums or DVDs, right? You would buy a unit and it was about ownership. You had it. Now, 
ownership is old fashioned. Now it's about streaming. You never actually have the content, but you watch it. You pay a monthly subscription fee to watch streamed content. So the whole way that we access and enjoy entertainment has been revolutionized by the internet. Let's take one more question. To what extent does the entertainment industry impact a country's economy? I've got no idea. Honestly, if you ask me that question, I can probably make something up, but what a difficult question. So when you're practicing and getting ready for IELTS, go on the internet, do a bit of research. That's what I've done because this is a challenging question. Um, so let's find out what a bit of research might tell us. So let's have a look at this website that might tell us a little bit about it. 30 stats, that's statistics that reveal the economics of the entertainment industry. That's just what I need. So what does it tell us? The shifting sands of technology and economics have created unique challenges across segments of the entertainment industry over the past quarter century. Much of the change in how business is done in music, film and art boils down to one catalytic factor, the internet. Great. So it is all about the internet. That's true. Now, you want to be careful that you don't want to speak like this because this is not how people speak, right? Don't say the shifting sands of technology. Seriously, that's just poetic. Um, it's written language. You want to pick out the phrases that might be useful for you. One of them is this one. It boils down to, that's a great spoken expression. You can say, well, the impact of technology, it all, it all boils down to one main thing the internet. All right. It talks about revenue models. That's a nice um, collocation. So the whole revenue models of artists has changed because of the internet. And really, the whole media landscape has changed. So these are nice collocations, but be careful um, how much you... Uh, read and how much you actually speak natural English. How do you know? <laughs> Stick with me and I'll tell you. It goes on to talk about things like, although advents like peer-to-peer -peer sharing, great, streaming, uh, the immediacy of relationship between artist and fan. That's a bit written. You may want to talk about how close the artist and the fans are. But these are great little expressions. Streaming, we've talked about peer-to-peer -peer sharing, right? So we can talk about that, how it's changing all of these things. How does it affect the economy? Well, it comes down to give us some stats. Let's have a look. So this is mainly for America because it's an American website. Uh, revenue from media and entertainment, 22 trillion. So research tells us that the revenue from entertainment um, in the United States is huge. Maybe Maybe that's because more and more people are enjoying their free time. They're attracted by more and more high quality um, streaming content. And so they're investing more money. So it is having a big impact. What's interesting, though, is that of all of this money that the music industry is generating, musicians only receive 12% of that figure. So the artists are not getting everything. It's also interesting that 70% of the music industry market share is split between three giants. 
Universal, Sony and Warner. So you can go on and you can do a bit of research because this is what I do because I had no idea about this question. And this can give you one or two ideas about how to do it. So there you go. Do a bit of research. So there you have it. A few quick takeaways are one, be careful not to pick out written English, but make sure you're picking out good spoken English um, and get great ideas from the Internet. Um, try and use reliable sources. But to be honest, whether the research is true or not, nobody cares, especially not the examiner. They're only looking at your English. So don't worry too much. You can even make things up. <laughs> I didn't say that. No, really, you cannot quote me. Let's move on. So those are some interesting ideas, right? Um, let's see if I can now answer that question. To what extent does the entertainment industry impact a country's economy? Um, I think it has a huge impact because I think nowadays more and more people are spending their free time and their money on entertainment, whether it's going to see concerts or live performances of music, dance or ballet. Um, certainly it's having a big impact on the entertainment industry. What's more, as more and more high quality content is being created, such as Amazon films, Apple series, HBO series, this attracts people to, to buy this and they will be um, happy to pay a monthly subscription fee um, to watch high quality content. And I think the, the revenue that countries, I think the revenue that the industry is getting from streaming is is huge. Um, I read recently. <laughs> I read recently that um, in um, in the United States alone, the entertainment industry is creating two point two trillion dollars a year. So clearly, it's having a big impact on the country's economy. <laughs> and listen, guys, that uh, on that note, my final answer. I'm going to wrap up. We've looked at performances, um, answering part three questions and your approaches to doing that. Remember to go deeper into your answer and examples and examples. That's the key. Plenty of examples um, and you should do very, very well. Stay with me. In the future, we'll be doing more topics around part three to help you really tackle this difficult part of the IELTS speaking test. If you've enjoyed this video, please do subscribe. Um, if you want more, check out my online course on Udemy. Come over to Facebook and watch me with the live classes there and you can join in. And also, if you really want that one-to-one -one contact, contact me on italki where I do classes there. That's it. Thank you very much for joining me. Um, I hope you have a fantastic day. Go and enjoy some entertainment. I think I'm going to. Take care. Bye-bye.